Welcome to Consumer Science News and Notes, an informative program from experts on your health, home, family, food, and finances. Did you know that tiny homes are a big thing? That whatever size your house, your indoor air can be cleaned? Or that services and resources are available to help people deal with the diseases of old age? Consumer Science News and Notes will explain these interesting facts and offer useful and intriguing information. During the program, we will let you know about websites you can visit for useful data and ideas. We'll also tell you where to send for free brochures and information packets. A growing trend, especially for students, millennials, empty nesters, and seniors, is to live in small apartments and tiny houses. These hints can help you cook up a great small kitchen there. Consider how you cook, entertain, and live. Define what's important to you. Do you want a deep sink? Many burners on the cooktop? Look for smart storage solutions, such as sinks with built-in accessories. For example, Blanco Quattro stainless steel sinks come with built-in cutting boards and colanders. You can just slice up your vegetables, then tip them into the colander for rinsing. To make cleaning easier, there's a magnetic caddy that sticks to the side, so your sponges, soaps, and brushes are always handy. Plus, the sinks are the same size from top to bottom to maximize the bowl. A sink that's 26 or 27 inches is compact, but still has room for pots and baking sheets. The small yet spacious Blanco Precise undermount sinks feature the rock-hard durability of sill granite. They come in eight colors and a sleek modern single bowl design, so you don't have to sacrifice style for small spaces. Learn more at BlancoAmerica.com. Americans are living longer. While this brings great opportunities, older adults face an increased risk of dementia. There's no cure, but early detection and treatment can greatly improve quality of life. So if you suspect a problem, see a doctor. Fortunately, there are more resources than ever to help. For example, the Elder Care Locator, a program of the U.S. Administration on Aging, connects people who have dementia and their caregivers to a wide range of local services. Learn more at eldercare.acl.gov and 800-677-1116. Dealing with the loss of a loved one is never easy. Let 1-800-Flowers help you navigate through difficult times with the Celebrating a Life online resource guide. Whether it's advice on what to write in a sympathy card, how to comfort someone who's grieving, or what type of floral arrangements are appropriate for a funeral, 1-800-Flowers.com has a wide array of frequently updated topics to make the difficult times a little easier. Visit 1-800-Flowers.com to learn more. Lena, a scientist, has a brilliant idea to understand and treat diabetes. Lena receives a grant from the American Diabetes Association to fund her research. Members of Lena's research lab identify a mysterious gene involved in diabetes. Lena presents the findings at the ADA Scientific Sessions, the world's largest diabetes conference. John hears Lena's lecture and decides to alter the mysterious gene in mice, finding that it protects animals from developing diabetes. John and Lena work together to publish the groundbreaking results in one of ADA scholarly journals, and scientists around the world are inspired. Peter reads Lena and John's study and begins searching for a chemical that can change the way the diabetes gene works. Peter tests millions of chemicals and finds several that may work. These chemicals are now considered candidates for a new medication. Julie, a scientist at a pharmaceutical company, learns about the innovative chemicals and decides to test them in animals. One of the innovative chemicals is found to be safe and effective in animals. Then it is studied in hundreds of people with diabetes in a large clinical development program. The FDA approves the chemical to become a new medication. Through all of these research efforts, a life-saving treatment for diabetes is available. 
ADA's clinical practice guidelines are updated to advise doctors and nurses on how to use the new medication. Doctors and nurses provide the new treatment to patients. The American Diabetes Association facilitates every step of this process to accelerate the discovery and development of solutions for people with diabetes, leading to longer, healthier lives. 40 years ago, Alzheimer's disease wasn't discussed at the dinner table or in the doctor's office. But a group of people devastated by the disease came together to change that. Out of their passion, the Alzheimer's Association was born and today is the leading organization in Alzheimer's care, support, and research. For the more than 5 million Americans living with Alzheimer's and their over 15 million caregivers, the association's free 24-7 helpline and website at alz.org are often a first source of information. From in-person support groups to online message boards, the Alzheimer's Association is available wherever and whenever help is needed. The Alzheimer's Association is the nonprofit with the highest impact in Alzheimer's research worldwide, behind only the Chinese and United States governments. Our investments of over $375 million in studies around the globe have uncovered new methods of diagnosis and deepened understanding about the risk factors and causes of this fatal disease. As a result of the association's vision and commitment, the scientific community is now poised to discover breakthrough methods of treatment and prevention. The Alzheimer's Association has activated a nationwide network of dedicated advocates who together with the association work at all levels of government to address the Alzheimer's crisis. Under the association's leadership, and with the support of champions in Congress, federal funding for Alzheimer's research has reached a historic high of $991 million. And policies to enhance access to critical care planning are now in place. No other organization has the reach, the knowledge, or the understanding to defeat Alzheimer's disease. But we can't do it alone. Stand with the Alzheimer's Association today to build a world without Alzheimer's disease tomorrow. Join us. I have a question. How do you feel? Are you healthy? If you're healthy, you have what it takes to build a future, to live a dream. Remember when you were little and your fantasy was flying, staying up late, waking up early, and being the superhero? Look, it's happened. It's now. The world's most powerful people are everyday people, every day. you need a cake, a special toolbox of powers. Maybe together we are the power. Maybe our magic is immunizations. Maybe our Batmobiles are ambulances or critical care units in third worlds that never got a chance to be first. With hurricanes on the rise, there is little to no time to catch our breath. Tsunamis, earthquakes, epidemics haven't run us off either. Because we were born to do this. Our Gotham is a pitch black Puerto Rico, a waterlogged Texas, and a wind ravaged Floridian coast. Yes, there's work to do, but banded together, we've always had the power to change. We've always understood the power of health, that compassion has no price too high, that medicine is not a myth, but a vehicle for change. We can't all be doctors. But we can be Cape Crusaders for health. From our desk, our MacBooks, our work trucks, our food vans, we are the heroes we used to daydream about. Together, we are the most powerful resource in humanity as we know it. Together, we hold the scales while justice rests, if only for a moment. It's always been us. So chin up, pat your chest, because we've got work to do. Yes, today is the day. The world needs us, everyday people.
everyday people. We all know that look. The look of joy, accomplishment, and strength in the face of obstacles. And at Easter Seals, our look is changing. In the same way we're changing how the world defines and views disabilities. Our look may change, but our commitment to providing services that allow people living with disabilities to learn, live, work, and play within their community remains strong. Welcome to the next generation of Easter Seals, where amazing things happen. Learn more at EasterSeals.com. I have been through other hurricanes in Puerto Rico, but this has been this, the most difficult one. And part of it is because it, it impacted the whole island. The 78 municipalities that uh, in, in the island were affected. So now with the impact of this hurricane, it's become more and more difficult for families to have a, a decent shelter for, for them and for their, for their family. As our initial response, Habitat is providing Puerto Rico with shelter repair kits. These shelter repair kits are going to provide residents with the tools necessary for them to start the reconstruction of their homes. So we need your help to come together to help us help Puerto Rico become stronger. This is our first phase of our response to the people of Puerto Rico. Not building a house, but we can certainly make a great impact on people's lives. And a very simple thing of putting together a kit. This is a great way to help the people get back into their homes quickly. Today here in Caguas, both the Habitat for Humanity International team and the Habitat for Humanity Puerto Rico team are distributing kits for the people of Puerto Rico. These kits are definitely going to you know, improve their quality of life in the near term. And you can see already by the numbers showing up. Uh, and it's, uh, it's just a great feeling, obviously very rewarding for us volunteers. But the important thing is to really see those families uh, getting some improvement to their lives in the short term. Some people look at the kit and they see items and tools, but I see hope. Hope that will help us find, find a way to build our house again. I'm JDRF. I am JDRF. I'm JDRF because... I am JDRF. Because... Type 1 diabetes is hard. I am JDRF because I advocate. Because I am helping research progress because I am part of a community of hope. Because I believe we can find a cure. I'm JDRF because... Because I'm gonna beat this. Type 1 diabetes won't hold me back. We are, we are JDRF. Okay. <laughs> we are JDRF because we do big things. We are JDRF because they're the ones at the front lines doing what we need. Every morning when I wake up, I am JDRF. I am JDRF because I want an artificial pancreas because I am the mother of a type one. Because I am a fighter. Because I believe in them. Because I want my kids to say they used to have diabetes. Because I want to help others. Because I believe we're all working together. Because together we can build a community. Helping to just raise awareness for type one diabetes. I am JDRF because I want to see a world where type one becomes type none diabetes. I am JDRF because I want a cure. Cheryl goes to dialysis three days a week. Lately, she's been feeling weak, tired, dizzy, cold, and out of breath. At first, she was unsure of the cause of these symptoms. Luckily, she came across the Doctor Conversation Guide for Anemia on KidneyFund.org and talked to her doctor about her symptoms. Cheryl's doctor explained that the majority of patients on dialysis have anemia for a variety of reasons. Ultimately, it is caused by not having enough red blood cells in your body. Cheryl's doctor was happy to share several treatment options and recommend other ways to improve her anemia so that Cheryl can feel like herself again. Visit kidneyfund.org slash anemia dash ESRD, download our free doctor conversation guide, and talk with your doctor or another member of your healthcare team to find out more about your anemia symptoms and treatment options.
anybody with metastatic cancer will tell you that the first few months up to the first year is very difficult because you just don't have the hope. I live from scan to scan and it's not a good way to live. Sometimes I have a lot of headache, my body hurts, migraines, hot flashes, then I'm cold and I'm hot. My body was changing in ways I was not understanding and had no control over. Chronic diarrhea that comes on like urgently, it's no planning and you get these severe stomach cramps. Lost my hair, I gained a lot of weight. I got a rash on my face that looked like acne. I hadn't had this kind of acne since I was 12. Once it became metastasized to the liver and it was discovered that the anti-hormonals weren't gonna work anymore, we also discovered that I had damage to my femur. I wasn't able to put any weight on my leg whatsoever. It's a very painful surgery and a pain, painful thing to go through. There's a titanium rod in the middle of it. They called me and let me know, hey, your L5 broke. I was like, so how did it break? And he's like, well, that's the thing. So your cancer is back. It's in my spine all the way up, like each one. It was in my sternum. It was in my collarbone, it was my lymph nodes in my neck. We're looking at 12 to 24 months. The chin to waist back brace. And they were scared that it could just break at any moment and paralyze me. And then fusions usually take up most of my day between getting blood drawn and seeing the doctor and waiting to get a seat. Those things are all part of my life that I'll never, you know, I'll never get it back. But I also understand it is my life. When I found out she was metastatic, um, well, of course, I, did, I didn't want to hear that. I didn't hear, you know, it was already hard enough knowing what she got diagnosed with. And um, I love my sister. I only have one sister, so I just wouldn't want her be without her, with, you know, not having her in my life. I can't be taken away from my kids. Okay, it would be bad if I passed in a year. It would be sad if I passed in five years. It makes me just as sad if I'm not there to see my girls in their wedding dresses. My son was petrified, just in place. I was petrified. I hung up the phone. I excused myself saying I had to go to the bathroom. I went into my room and I dropped to the floor because I didn't want to upset him because my kids are my life. She showed up to my house and she surprised me because she didn't, she had shaved her hair. She shaved her hair and she showed up. She said, happy Mother's Day to you. One day she told me, you know what hurts me the most is my hair. She said, not so much that I have breast cancer because at least, you know, after the mastectomy, I could just cover myself up and I feel normal. But with all my hair, I don't. It's like you're walking and you're doing fine and all of a sudden you're on a tightrope over the Grand Canyon. And some days I want to jump because my pain is so high. When I woke up at night after these nightmares about having breast cancer, I still had it. It was a nightmare that just would not go away. It is a different type of cancer and it's a cancer that's still killing people. And that's the hard thing to say is that it's not curable. I think it definitely takes a village to help someone get through breast cancer or live with it because it doesn't just end, it continues. It's the hardest thing that a person, I mean, I've been through so much, but it is so hard to live every single day. It's hard to do what I need to do to be a good mom, a wife. It's just hard to, to be alive. We need people out there shouting it from the rooftop. We need more studies. We need more dollars for research. Every three minutes, someone in the U.S. is diagnosed with a blood cancer. Despite progress, more than a third of blood cancer patients still do not survive five years after their diagnosis. But thanks to the research funded by the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, in the field and on the horizon, 
we now have a real opportunity to change that outcome. With continued support, thousands of patients who don't respond well to current treatments will have hope with better tolerated treatment options. With your help, we can ensure that patients get better access to life-saving treatments, therapies, and quality of life. I live. I live. I live. I live. I live. She lives. Because of the research done by the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society in the battle against blood cancer. If you had a chance to support the research that is saving lives, what would you do? People join Walk MS to raise awareness and funds that change the world for everyone affected by multiple sclerosis. MS attacks the brain and spinal cord. It's the most common neurological disease leading to disability in young adults. Walk MS brings communities together, creating teams with friends, loved ones, and coworkers to rally around those we care about and end MS forever. Join us. Together we are stronger. We don't know what causes MS, and we haven't yet discovered a cure, but we are getting closer. The funds raised at Walk MS are making a difference. Walk MS brings communities together, connecting people living with MS and those who care about them. Together with our family, friends, and communities, we're making a difference. Walk MS fundraising accelerates research breakthroughs and life-changing breakthroughs. It will take all of our passion, determination, and fundraising to end MS forever. Together, we can change the world for people with MS. Join us. Register today, start a team, and raise funds at walkms.org. It was someone every step of the way with a red vest on, letting us know that everything was gonna be okay. My kids are able to lay their heads down and be warm at night, I'm, I'm very grateful. We've gotten breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We've gotten clothes, we've gotten toothbrush, toothpaste, shampoo, everything we possibly needed. Thank goodness the Red Cross came in, brought that truck in with a hot meal today. Sure beats ravioli out of a can. <laughs> it was very good. Until the next time, we hope these ideas for your health, your safety, and your finances make your day a little better and a lot more fun.